Welcome to another episode of The Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip. Trip. Good morning, guys. Uh, today we're going to be taking this tree down. It's grown into the roof of this building, so it's got to come down, but we're going to probably use it for a repair that we need to do on our cabin, and I'll show you that in a minute, but some of the lower logs have rotted out, and this looks about the right size and definitely the right length to get probably a good two lengths. So, yeah, step number one is to get up there and get a rope on it because it's right amongst all the buildings here. I see one path for it. It, we're gonna have to probably put a rope down there tighten it up get the boys pulling on it I'll cut a wedge and hopefully it'll go that way if it goes this way we're in trouble but the nice thing about this tree is we needed a big long straight log for the front of our cabin we have one rotten log along the front of our cabin so this is not gonna go to waste we will dry it out over the summer and then hopefully this fall it'll be ready in time to replace it before next winter. Almost had it, I see. That is, that's only good for horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> Around here, if I have a bit more slack. Yeah, let me just make a random blue line here. That's cool. Nice straight tree too. Yeah, so it's gonna get hung up in that birch. We're just gonna have to force it down manually. Like this. It seems to be putting a good lean on it. So when I I'll go cut a wedge. Yeah, and, come and don't let go. Don't rock it. Yeah. It just keeps constant steady. I remember the one by the cabin. Yeah. There. That's perfect. There we go. Woo. That's exactly where we wanted it to fall. <laughs> that was perfect, huh? Yeah. Nice. Good cutting. At least it's not going to break the roof anymore. So that did bend in the steel roof quite a bit. Yeah. Um, Alright. See if you can pull the rope that way. Axis might actually work out better than our spurs.
I'm just going to be checking the uh, maple sap here throughout the day. Right now it's still not moving. Uh, nothing happening. It's super warm out in the sun and in the front yard, but back here in the in the forest it's still pretty chilly. So it's supposed to get up to nine degrees Celsius today. So that's super warm. These trees should be uh, should be flowing. Let's, uh, let's see what we can get out of them. Nothing yet though. So the temperatures stayed above freezing last night and you can start to see a change in the look of the lake. It's still, there's still a lot of ice out there so we're not uh, ready to be putting a boat in the water yet but today is, um, we're expecting some rain and some wind. So the rain is good because it starts to melt the ice from above as well as below. And the wind apparently is good because it gets, even though there's ice on top, it starts to move in, in waves like that and once it starts cracking it speeds up the melting process so we're getting uh, low on everything um, so that's why we're anxious to see that ice melt so we can get a boat in the water and go shopping uh, we should be we'll be okay I mean we have tons of emergency food like a lot so we, we've never had to dip into that and I don't think we'll need to here we're just gonna have to get super creative we do have a big brisket as far as things like eggs and milk um, we're completely out. Well, we have uh, egg whites, so we're down to uh, egg whites and if that runs out we have powdered eggs for emergencies, but um, also we switched to our last propane. So yeah, we're getting to the end of the season here, but I think we have everything we need and uh, we'll just have to see how, how long it takes for the ice to break up. We're not expecting any super warm, you know, double digit temperatures. Um, for a while so it's it looks like it's going to be a bit of a slow ice out this year but it is what it is and uh our our neighbor dan might be back this weekend with the airboat if you know if we can't get a, a boat in the water so we're just going to walk around the island this morning and uh, check things out snow is melting and uh, see if our sap is flowing Good. Things are running. They weren't. Nothing was happening yesterday, but with the warmer temperatures, we're at least getting some drips, and the bucket's about just under a quarter full. So that's good. We'll check these two, and then uh, I think today we, we were gonna boil syrup today, but with the wind, we might have to rethink that. We'll let you know how it goes. But can't wait to start boiling this stuff down into uh, maple sugar. All right, so the rain has begun. Uh, first rain of the season for us. We're gonna keep an eye on the lake. We've also got the combo of pretty good high winds, so this should at least shift things around a bit, but we'll keep an eye on it and uh, let you know how it goes.
right, I'm going to measure the thickness of the ice again. I don't want to go out too far because it, it definitely feels unstable and it's always thicker here by the shore, but let's see what we got. So the first uh, difference is it's really, whoa, here in cracks. Um, it's very soft ice. It doesn't take much to get through it. It's all white. Uh, you can tell the good ice, thick ice is clear and hard. This is white almost all the way through. So it's seven inches to the top of this white stuff. You can see about an inch or inch and a half of good ice down there. The rest is slush, so we're getting there.
So the wind has mostly died down today, which is good for making a fire, not so good for cracking up the ice, but that's okay. We'll let nature work away at that layer of ice. Um, I'll take another reading today and see if it came down any overnight with all that rain. For now, we're just getting a good hot base of a fire going, and then we're gonna start boiling down some sap. So yeah, we've been looking forward to doing that. And the trees are dripping away there, so sap is running, and uh, we have a perfect day for making some maple syrup. So that bucket of sap we collected the other day froze. Um, it won't take long to thaw over that fire. And uh, then we'll get that boiling and head in the bush and collect another bucket of sap. So we've been boiling for a couple hours here. I moved the, the smaller Dutch oven, poured it into the big one. We're just gonna keep boiling it down. It's already getting a, a sweet smell and taste to it and starting to you know brown up a bit with sugar. So yeah, we're getting there. Um, I'm gonna go get another bucket of sap. Wow, 
So you can see the big Dutch oven, we lift it up high just to get it off of the most of the heat and just to let it slow boil. But it's starting to get um, a nice color. We might finish it inside on the stove just to be careful. You have to really watch it towards the end. Um, and then we'll get another pail of sap going. But it's looking good and it's smelling amazing. This is uh, nature's bounty right here. Look at that stuff. Pure sweet maple syrup. Oh my word, that is unbelievably good. Wow. It's just an incredible thing, you know, from a maple tree. You collect the sap, boil it down, and you end up with that pure, delicious maple syrup. So it was a lot of fun making our first batch of maple syrup and it turned out delicious. We hope to make a lot more um, over the next week or so, but uh, this morning we woke up to below zero or freezing temperatures. So the most of the sap has frozen in, in its place. So there's some sapsicles or icicles of sap um, coming out of the spiles. So until the temperatures get you know fairly warm, which may not happen today, but until that happens, uh, there won't be any sap to collect. So we'll get back to it another day. Uh, some of you have asked about how to, making maple syrup, what's the ratio of sap to syrup? And it's usually about 40 to one. So to get one mason jar full of syrup, you need at least 40 um, mason jars full of sap. So that's, uh, that's roughly the ratio. And we haven't fully perfected the whole uh, process, but we're working on doing that, getting the coloration right. And we do have a hydrometer so if we do get enough, the hydrometer will tell you exactly when you hit the proper syrup uh, consistency. So it's one of those things we want to become uh, more proficient at and uh, put away a lot of syrup for the winter. We have now completely run out of some of our food supplies like milk and eggs. Our friend Dan came by this morning to give us a ride out to the marina so we can head into town and stock up for another week or two iced in at the island. We were anxious to get an idea of the thickness of the ice in the big part of the lake and to see if the channel was beginning to melt. The ice appeared to be only an inch or two thick in the middle of the lake, and there were sections of open water in the channel. Stay tuned for next week's episode as we await the spring melt-off. And in the meantime, Happy, Happy Easter! Easter.